with Richard Lydon and Jenny Hull. Tonight's headlines, 800 jobs go as Dyson moves its vacuum cleaner factory to the Far East. The tragedy of the teenager killed by deodorant spray. And up for the cup, the Rovers fans aiming for a game against the Gunners. Good evening. Good evening. Welcome to the programme. The main story tonight, 800 jobs are being lost in the West. The vacuum cleaner maker Dyson is switching production from Wiltshire to the Far East. There have been rumours for months, but the announcement still came out of the blue for many staff. Only recently, when he began production of a new washing machine, the company chairman and founder, James Dyson, was saying how much he wanted to stay in Malmesbury. We want to have them engineered and made in Malmesbury. That's exactly what we want. We don't want to have to go and do it in the Far East or wherever. We want to do it here. That was then, and indeed, washing machine production is staying in Malmesbury. But for the best-selling vacuum cleaners, it was a very different story from Mr Dyson today. Let's go live to Malmesbury now and our reporter, Rebecca Broxton. Uh, how did the multi-millionaire break the news to his staff earlier today, Becky? Well, workers were called to a mass meeting here when they began work this morning. James Dyson made the short journey from his home in Great Summerford to tell the workforce that almost half of them face losing their jobs as he switches production of his vacuum cleaner to Malaysia. I'm told that there was two minutes of stunned silence as the news was digested. Mr Dyson told his workforce there were a number of reasons for his decision, but essentially it is cheaper to build the products in the Far East. Well, it was an agonising decision, getting, getting this proposal together, and very, very difficult for me personally, and very, very sad for all the workforce who've worked so hard for us. Um, but the fact of the matter is we have to do it, uh, and we will be discussing the proposal with them over the next few weeks. Well, what will happen if you don't do it? What is the imperative there? Uh, we need to do this in order to compete uh, with our competitors and in order to bring out new products that have new technology more quickly. Uh, and that's really why we need to do it. James Dyson has been Malmesbury's biggest employer for the past five years. He built the factory behind me after his design for a bagless vacuum cleaner was rejected by his now rival Hoover. He's since become a multi-millionaire as his household cleaning product empire has grown. Bob Constantine has this report. His revolutionary bagless vacuum cleaner has made James Dyson literally a household name, as well as one of Britain's richest men. But his decision to switch production to the Far East caused anger and shock at the Wiltshire plant today. Obviously it's very sad news for a lot of people. A lot of people have um, taken new mortgages out um, on the strength of the shift system that's worked here at the moment. So they're going to be very disappointed and very shocked. It was just literally just shock and amazement. I've heard one or two people saying it was just like a, a bad dream and they're going to wake up soon and uh, it wouldn't be, wouldn't be real. For all his relaxed appearance, Mr Dyson takes a hard-headed approach to business. Wage rates for the non-union workforce in Malaysia, where his cleaners are likely to be made in future, are a fraction of those here, around £20 a month compared to 1500 Both politicians and unions urged Mr Dyson today to look at the wider picture. It ought to be about more than just wage levels. It ought to be about terms and conditions and about the way in which, about loyalty, about expertise, about very high quality work staff uh, that we've got here in the UK. Those are the things that James Dyson ought to be looking at. This is a real body blow to the manufacturing base in the high tech successful area. Uh, the people of Malmesbury in the area have built up Dyson's. The consumer base in Britain has helped put it where it is. And now they're getting a real kick in the teeth. James Dyson's career as an inventor started in this converted barn near Bath where he developed such products as the ball barrow and an exhaust filter. Initially, his dual cyclone vacuum cleaner was rejected by rival manufacturers, so he was forced to develop it himself. What followed was one of industry's greatest success stories. From its launch in 1993, the Dyson became a bestseller, despite costing far more than its rivals. But as he expanded at Malmesbury, Mr Dyson had battles with local planners and with high interest rates. Today's decision at least means that his colourful washing machines will still be made in Wiltshire, but like other manufacturers, James Dyson has been unable to resist the lure of the Far East. Bob Constantine, HTV News.
Well, news of the job losses at the Dyson factory here comes as a bitter blow to the area. Mansborough is losing jobs hand over fist at the moment. I understand that Lucent Technologies, which is the second biggest employer in the town, is going to shed 63 jobs in April. And that telecommunications company is moving out of the town altogether in August. So it's a pretty gloomy picture on the jobs front in Malmesbury at the moment. And I have to say, it's the only thing that people in the town are talking about today. The job losses at Dyson. You hear people talking about it in the paper shop, in the pub, in the butchers. Rachel Royce has the latest. The historic town of Malmesbury was reeling today from the news that it's to lose a major part of the Dyson factory. When production of vacuum cleaners switches to the Far East, 800 jobs will be lost, a huge blow to a town with a population of little over 5,000. Devastating because the majority of the town work up there. Yeah, uh, it'd be awful. Um, I think you'd probably start to see a bit of an exodus for, from the town for some of the people who live here. Dyson is the second employer to announce job losses at Malmesbury in less than six months. High-tech company Lucent made 500 redundancies nationwide in October. It's believed around 200 were from the town. There are fears that workers will find it hard to get new jobs in the area. And we've just got to liaise with every agency possible to see what we can do for them. I have already spoken to James Gray, the MP, this morning, and um, we... We don't know what we can do at the moment because it has come as quite a shock. Work is out in the Far East, so really just being taken advantage of, aren't they? Cheap labour, that's what it's all about. While the fat cats get fatter, the ordinary worker goes under. Malmesbury will still have a Dyson factory, making washing machines and carrying out research and development. James Dyson claims this is the heart of the business, but today the heart seemed to have gone out of the town. Rachel Royce, HTV News, Malmesbury. Bob Constantine is with me. Bob, was it just wishful thinking that we could hang on to a manufacturer like that in Wiltshire? Uh, well, so it has transpired. Of course, they're not losing manufacturing entirely, and luckily the research and development side, the real skills base of the company, will remain. But uh, in the end, what this proves is that although we thought Dyson was somehow special, somehow local, somehow immune from globalisation, in the end, uh, there is no part for sentiment in big business. At the moment, washing machines are staying here, but if it's true that you can make vacuum cleaners cheaper in Malaysia, you can make washing machines cheaper. Uh, well, a any form of manufacturing like this, which is basically an assembly function, is actually not in itself that high-tech. The days are gone when a man st stood at a lathe and measured things with his eye and, and the touch of his fingers. That sort of craft has gone. We're now talking about largely an assembling function, which can be done cheaper overseas. I think what uh, the manufacturing unions are saying is we must do all we can in terms of interest rates and euro conversion rates and so on and so forth to keep skills in this country and really add something to the products that we assemble. It's impossible to underestimate the effect this will have on Malmesbury and the area. Is it a done deal? Any chance at all of saving it? I don't think realistically there is. I mean, I'm obviously I'm not privy to all the discussions that have been going on, but it appears is happening is that some of the workforce will go in, in May, the rest uh, by November, and that side of the operation will then switch to Malaysia, where, uh, of course, they will then have to transfer some people to train the Malaysians who uh, won't have those skills at the moment. But in the long run, of course, they will be able to do these jobs cheaper. We'll have to see whether the quality and, and so on can be maintained. Bob, thank you. More of the day's news now. We